What's going on workforce? Brian here and today we're talking about my warrior controller layout for level 70. In today's video we're going to be covering three things. My HUD layout, my controller layout, and my settings and any macros that I might be using. So to start let's go ahead and cover our HUD layout. If you've seen any of my other guides, especially relating to tanking, not much has changed here. But let's go ahead and highlight everything that I've got. I look at everything here within this box. I kind of call it the, <laughs> the kill box, essentially. The majority of my time, especially as a tank, is focused within this window. Over here on the left, I got my focus target bar, followed by my enemy list. I have my target bar. And new to Stormblood, I have my beast gauge. Down here, I have my status effects, and I've got my hot bar three. So I can easily see anything that's on as well as debuffing me. And then I have my hotbar 3, which is used for cooldowns alone. Usually a typical question I get is how do I access those skills? And you, the answer is you don't. You just look at those to make sure that you know when things are off cooldown and can be used. I have my left cross hotbar and my right cross hotbar slightly offset. I have my regular cross hotbar, my parameters, and then a hotbar just for various emotes that I like to click on occasion. This is just for recommendations only. Feel free to make the layout your own. I find that this works very handily for me for all of my jobs, but at the end of the day, you have four slots right here that you can customize. So if you're like me and you play multiple roles, that could be very handy for you to take advantage of. So now let's talk about my layout and how I place my skills. We're gonna start with the top hop bar right here that is just for my cooldowns. I've got Defiance and Deliverance because obviously you see that I don't have them easily accessible and I do that on my expanded cross hop bar to access those. But I wanna make sure that I know when they're off cooldown and that I can easily switch to either one. The cooldown is more or less whenever you just make the change, so then you're going to have to wait 10 seconds before you can make the change again, but easily if I'm in content and I know I need to switch, I, can, I want to have it communicating to me when I need to switch. Then I have Thrill of Battle. Onslaught, this is just to make sure that I'm very well aware of when I might be able to dash, and that's because I actually have this macro under my Warrior main. I do have the ability to call it on demand if needed, but we'll get into that in the macro section. Then I have Infuriate, I have Unchained, which does switch to inner release whenever I'm in the Defiant stance. So if you see that, it automatically changes and upgrades. So it's kind of have one or the other, it's very handy. Uh, but I put it there just so I know whenever I can use it in and of itself. Raw Intuition is next, followed by Berserk, Equilibrium, and then Provoke. So again, cooldowns and I have this bar slightly larger than the rest just so that they are more prominent than anything else. Then over here on the left cross hop bar I have a Mega Potion, Thrill of Battle, and Raw Intuition. Kind of like a defensive as well as a healing perspective, but it's really up to you what you want to use here. I find that I actually have a lot more space due to just some simple changes that they made to Warrior. Namely, that Defiance and Deliverance automatically upgrade various skills, Inner Beast and Still Cyclone. So I'll be sure to switch stances when we get over to that section. Over here on the left, I've got Unchained, Equilibrium, Shake It Off, Vengeance, Home Gang, Rampart, Low Blow, and Upheaval. Upheaval is situational, so I kind of put it in my situational spot so that I can use it as more of a reaction depending on when my HP has fallen below just so I can get that extra boost to potency. Rampart and Low Blow are also cross roll, so feel free to switch these out with anything else. But one of the things I always try to make sure that I communicate is that Low Blow is my stun. And from a muscle memory perspective, I always try to put abilities that have similar effects in the same spot. So then whenever I'm playing job to job or roll to roll, it's more of a muscle memory command than it is trying to remember what the skill does or where I placed it. We'll get into that more here on the right hand side as well. On the right hand side, I've got Storm's Eye. Storm's Path, Inner Beast, Steel Cyclone. Let's go ahead and switch to this. So then if I'm in Defiance, that becomes Fail Cleave and Decimate. Then I've got Maim, Butcher's Block, Skull Sunder, and Warrior Main. And this is a macro, so let's go ahead and jump into that macro in and of itself and let me show you exactly what it does. This macro is very simple. It's Heavy Swing. However, if I am not able to use Heavy Swing, it's going to fail through to Onslaught and or Tomahawk. This is very handy. So if Onslaught doesn't have the Beast Gauge, or if it's still on cooldown, it's going to Tomahawk. Otherwise, it's going to Heavy Swing in that case. So if I'm close enough, that's what's important. 
It's important to know that depending on your ping, you could struggle with this macro. Usually, if you have a slow ping, it'll end up being where you'll end up tomahawking even though you're within range just because the server is having a hard time communicating. If you find yourself in that situation, don't use this macro and just break out these three skills onto their own bar. With the macro out of the way, we have all but our right cross hotbar and expanded hotbars left. Berserk, Onslaught, Overpower, and Infuriate. I put Overpower here because on my tanks, this is my AoE threat builder. I try to keep skills that have similar effects in the same spot, just so that it's more muscle memory than anything else. And ideally, especially at level 70 content, even maybe even 50 and 60, you shouldn't really need to overpower all that much. It is a big TP cost, but sometimes it ends up being worth it depending on the number of enemies that are within the range. This is going to continue to build threat, but if you couple this with Berserker and the other things, you can end up doing quite a lot of damage. One quick change I would like to mention for anybody who's coming from uh, Heaven's Word and might not be aware of it, Berserk does not have any disadvantage. It's on a 60 second cooldown and there is no pacification anymore. So you can get rid of those macros if you still have them. And lastly, let's go ahead and talk about our expanded cross hotbar, which I have set to hotbar 2. And I'll show you how to set that here in a second. Deliverance, Defiance, those are your two different stances. More tanking, you're going to have a DPS loss with this, but you can use Unchained to kind of offset that if needed. But from my experience, I like to usually go into Deliverance and be able to do Fail Cleave or Decimate over and over and over again. But I'll leave that up to you. I then have Convalescence. It's a great cross-roll skill. Again, you can put anything you want here. Inner Release, which is Unchained, depending on what stance you're in. I then have Reprisal. Another Unchained, because why not have, you, know, you can't have too many of those. And Provoke. You can easily see that I've got quite a few number of abilities and empty slots that I actually can work with. So, I leave it up to you. You can really kind of feel free to break out that macro and utilize these extra spaces. But in all honesty, you know, this would be great for items and other things that you might want to take advantage of in the future. So now that we've covered the cross hopper layout, the expanded hopper, double cross hoppers, and my cooldown bar, let's kind of talk about our settings. So under system and character configuration, if you go to your hopper settings, you have lots of options. You can see I've turned on hopper three here. You can make it look visibly different if you want, but that works for me. Under sharing, I've got one through six is always job specific and seven and eight are always my shared hot bars. That's things like this with my targeting macros, my limber break and everything like that. Under cross, I've got always display the cross hop bar. <laughs> you can have this turned off, nice little hiding if you so choose, but I'll leave it up to you. I am in hold mode. Most of the extra features like the double cross hop bar and expanded require hold and I'm always displaying the cross hop bar and I return to my cross hop bar after the W cross hop bar input. So things like doing this will automatically refocus me back into the left hop bar and right hop bar accordingly. And I have it set to where I'm gonna position my W cross hop bar separate from my cross hop bar. So doing that, it's going to put that there or I can control its positioning on its own. Under custom, this is where you control what shows up in your Expanded cross hop bar, so I can see LT and then RT is my cross hop bar to left, which is job specific for me based off of my sharing. And then I've got right trigger, left trigger, which is seven, which is a shared hop bar, like I said earlier. And then the W cross hop bar, I've got it enabled with only four buttons, and I'm setting it to three left and three right. So to be able to manage those buttons themselves, you can see that those that's where those actions are managed. You are not able to drag and drop onto these over here. These are just shortcuts you actually have to go to hop bar three or whatever hop bar you have it set to, to manage that in and of itself. And lastly, whenever I have my weapon drawn, I have myself set to hop bar one. In my previous warrior guide, I had defiance and deliverance macroed so they would automatically switch my hop bar setup. But with warrior in Stormblood at level 70, it's really not needed, especially because the skills auto upgrade on their own. This in and of itself is a huge space saver and a really great feature. Anyway, with that, that is my controller hop bar and layout guide. I really appreciate you watching this video and let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. We've got a lot of other guides coming out on Warrior, the Warrior 101 tanking guide, my thoughts on PvP, and then my overall thoughts on Warrior. So be sure to check the description below for those videos as, they, as soon as they are released. But for work to game my name is Brian. Thanks so much for watching this video and I hope to see you in my next. But until then, I hope you have a fantastic week.
Take care. Hey everybody, Brian and Chuck here for Work to Game. Chuck wants to tell you that you should totally subscribe to the channel and that you should totally hit that like button. Oh, and then we also got t-shirts on sale for some reason. That's a little bit mean, Chuck. I'm not crazy.